The duel between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker on Mustafar is one of, if not the most important and critical duel in the entire franchise. It is two brothers coming to war against one another, one who has fallen to the dark side in a hope of a greater galaxy, one that he can fully control, and a man who has utterly failed his apprentice even in his own eyes, somebody that he has loved, and someone that he has put all of his faith into, someone who he once considered to be the greatest Jedi potentially ever, far better than even he considered himself to be. It is tragic, it is beautiful, it is brutal, and yet, there is so much subtext going on in the duel, and that is the topic of today's holocron. I wanted to break down some of the most underrated parts of the duel between Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Why Obi-Wan was ultimately successful has been beaten to death, but there is so much to it. Exactly why Kenobi was able to overcome the massive power of the Chosen One in Anakin, how Anakin faltered, and how ultimately Palpatine said that this was one of the greatest displays by any Force wielder that he had ever seen and Palpatine was exceptionally impressed with Obi-Wan Kenobi, as well as the critical moment that Obi-Wan knew that he had to make a move, or Anakin would destroy him utterly. There has been a very popular clip going around showcasing Darth Vader and his duels with both Luke and Ahsoka Tano in the Ahsoka series. In the duel in Return of the Jedi, Luke is very slow to confront Vader, hoping that he can appeal to his father's lighter half and bring him back from the edges of the dark side. However, Darth Vader willingly attacks his son in order to goad Luke into turning to the dark side himself. If only to save his friends, Vader knows and feels the darkness within Luke, and yet, Luke refuses to turn. What's important though, is that it is not Luke's first reaction to attempt to fight Darth Vader and fight his father. He attempts to come at him with words first. The same thing happens with Ahsoka Tano in The World Between Worlds and Anakin. She tells Anakin that she doesn't want to fight him, something that he says he has heard before. But with Obi-Wan Kenobi, when he arrives on Mustafar, and in the Kenobi series, when Anakin draws his lightsaber, Kenobi too draws his weapon and says, I will do what I must. Although this could seem like a throwaway line on the surface, it is actually one of the most important lines in all of the lore. Sometime later, when Palpatine was discussing Vader and exactly why he lost to Kenobi, Palpatine gives out one of the biggest compliments ever heard. He says that Obi-Wan Kenobi arrived to Mustafar with a single goal in mind, to stop the Sith and to stop Anakin. Palpatine goes even further with this compliment though, saying that had the Jedi fought like Kenobi did on Mustafar, had they had that singular mind, the resolve to destroy the Sith and destroy the dark side, that the Sith would have had no chance of taking control in the galaxy ever again. Palpatine says that had the Jedi been like Kenobi that day on Mustafar, he would have lost, and it would not have been close. For someone like Palpatine to admit this is massive. It just so happens that Vader was on the receiving end of a Jedi, one that was completely unconflicted about what had to happen. That is the key. That is what happens to Obi-Wan Kenobi in the novelization for Revenge of the Sith and something that he admits. Obi-Wan says that he has to cut himself off entirely emotionally from Anakin. He has to view it as Darth Vader. He has to view his old friend as a Sith that must be destroyed. It is this resolve that allows Obi-Wan Kenobi to duel against a major conflicted and emotional Anakin without any conflict in himself whatsoever. There is no regret to Anakin. There is no attachment to him during the course of the entire duel. Obi-Wan has centered himself entirely in the Force, and because he has cut himself off emotionally from Anakin, removed all of his love for his brother, he is able to beat him and capitalize on Anakin's own emotion. But going further, I want to talk about their specific lightsaber forms and a massive reveal that comes towards the end of the duel in the Revenge of the Sith novelization. Obi-Wan Kenobi is obviously a master of Form 3 Sirisu, the all-defensive lightsaber form. The way Sirisu operated is it allows an individual to garner as much strength and energy over the course of a duel as possible, conserving all of their force power so that they can make one critical strike against their opponent. This allows Sirisu practitioners to occasionally defeat enemies that are far more powerful than they are, because of course, they are generating more and more energy, but holding it back until the critical moment, the critical strike. Anakin Skywalker's form though, Gem So, is the opposite of this. Gem So is about gaining momentum, turning every single attack into an offensive maneuver, forcing an opponent's own sequences back against them, 
being unrelenting, being massively aggressive, but controlled. They focus on turning an opponent's strikes against them, and then immediately responding with a counter strike. Anakin Skywalker vs. Obi-Wan Kenobi is the definition of an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. But while Anakin is filled with rage and conflicted, Obi-Wan Kenobi is not. He's cut himself off. But there is a critical detail towards the end of the Mustafar deal that I would like to touch upon. Towards the end of the duel, Obi-Wan has spent heavily on his force reserves. He's growing exhausted. Every single strike that he meets against Anakin is threatening to shatter the bones in his arms. Kenobi is trying to garner as much energy as possible for a critical strike, but towards the end of the duel, in his own mind, Obi-Wan admits that he is losing. Not to mention, there is a terrifying realization that creeps over the Jedi Master. The longer the duel goes, the more powerful Anakin is growing. The fury of the duel is only feeding Anakin, and where most users of Gem So and most wielders of such a heavy offensive output would have tired, Anakin Skywalker is not the normal wielder of the Force. Obi-Wan Kenobi senses just how powerful he is growing, and the more the duel progresses, the more likely Anakin's victory is seemingly assured. This is also something that Anakin senses, and he's pushing harder and harder. He's breathing in the powers of the dark side for one of the first times ever. Engaging in his first major duel as a Sith Lord, he is bathing in the riches that the dark side is offering him, the raw power, and he is becoming drunk with it. He is not slowing. Where Obi-Wan Kenobi has dueled before, individuals have grown tired meeting his defensive walls. But Anakin Skywalker is doing the impossible. He is growing more and more powerful. Kenobi's defenses are not wearing him down for the perfect strike, and Obi-Wan knows this, and he becomes heavily worried. That is why Kenobi is forced to break off the engagement, and he dares Anakin to perform a maneuver that he used to defeat Maul. In this critical moment, Obi-Wan is forced to play on the ego and the arrogance of Anakin. But the thing I want to touch on is not the ending of the duel, but the fact that had it continued for a mere 30 seconds longer, Anakin Skywalker's power would have grown to a point where even Kenobi would not be able to overcome it, and Kenobi knew this. But it was because of his resolve, and because of cutting off the connection from Anakin, that the Force allowed him the perfect moment to ditch the engagement. And instead of beating Anakin to the blade, he had to play on his arrogance. He had to play on the fact that he was drunk with power, and force him to make a mistake which Kenobi did. Just as much as Obi-Wan beat Anakin on that day, Anakin beat himself. And it was this strike of brilliance that ultimately would cut down Lord Vader, and would cause Palpatine to give Obi-Wan Kenobi his flowers. But anyway, my friends, these are two of the lesser explored aspects of the duel on Mustafar that I find fascinating. And I wanted to break down exactly what occurs in the beginning in Obi-Wan's mindset, and how in the end, he ultimately triumphs over Anakin. But the thing that I would like to capitalize on the most is just how powerful Darth Vader has become in this moment, and how in the duel of Mustafar, Anakin achieves what is seemingly impossible, growing more and more powerful over the course of a duel, not tiring or wavering at all, and that this was a massive shock to Obi-Wan Kenobi, as Obi-Wan learned in that instant just how powerful Lord Vader was capable of becoming just how unstoppable he would really be if he couldn't strike him down then and there. Can we only imagine the full power of a Darth Vader brought upon the Star Wars universe, a being with near unlimited power? But of course, that would never come to pass. But anyway, my friends and acolytes, what are your thoughts on this? And what are your thoughts on these lesser explored aspects of the duel with Obi-Wan and Anakin? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel today and may the force be with you.